Hey y'all, it's Jen and welcome to my channel If First Inklings. Today we are talking about the books that I read in November of 2019. So I managed to knock off two books from my physical TBR and both of these actually also come off of my TBRs from 2019. I mean, my 2017 TBRs. And we have 10 books to talk about, so let's get started. All right, guys, it is this time for my November 2017 wrap up. I read 10 books. Most of these were audio booked, um, and two of them I physically owned. So we are going to dive into this and see what I thought about the books that I read in 2019 during the month of November. I have my handy dandy reading bullet journal here and I do have links to some playing with me's coming up. Okay, so let's get started on this. The first book that I listened to in November was Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren. I gave this one five stars. It's an adult contemporary. It is one of those um, where they fell in love as kids, something happened, they parted ways, and then they came back together later on in life. Um, Christina Lauren is really hit or miss for me. Some of her their books I absolutely love, and some of them I don't like at all. This one, though, I did like. I have found that they're a, that I enjoy their adult contemporary usually more than their young adult contemporary. So the next one that I listened to was A Fire in Stars by Audrey Colhurst. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm going to continue on with this. I think this is a duology. Um, maybe a, it may be trilogy. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. But I... It was enjoyable. I couldn't tell you anything about it, though, so I guess it wasn't memorable to me. I know it has to do with um, the kingdom. The power is, is put, passed down through the mother um, in her kingdom, and in the boy's kingdom, it's passed through the boys or the father, and they're at odds. Um with trying to gain all the power yeah it's a magic fantasy story and it was it was okay I enjoyed it I gave it four stars but it was not real memorable for me so like I said I don't know that I'll continue on with this dear series the next one I got to listen to finally came in off my holds was Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff um, I gave this five stars it's the finale of the um, the Never Not series. It was it's the finale of it. It did not end as I expected it to, but I did enjoy it. There was a lot of Jay Kristoff humor throughout it that I really enjoyed. Um, five stars. The next one that I listened to was The Boy in the Stripe Pajamas by John Boyne. And I gave this one four stars. I knew this one going into this. This was about uh, the Holocaust and about Auschwitz. Um, I did not know going into this that this was told from a Russian perspective. Um, and that's really all I'm going to say about this. It was tragic and heart-wrenching and very unexpected. Um, and I think it's one that you just need to read. To travel along with yourself. It is middle grade, so the language is middle grade, and it is told by a younger boy, so that perspective and the words and the language are very much that middle grade level, and that was, reading it as an adult, it was kind of annoying, but I can understand why it was written the way it was, because it is written for a, a younger audience, so... The next book I listened to was What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I gave this one four stars. I did enjoy it. Um, it's probably my favorite of their books, and that is 
of their books combined and individually. Um, for me, most of Adam Silvera and Becky Albatelli's books and writing are a three, three and a half star for me. But this one, like I said, it was four stars. I really enjoyed it. And it told the tale of two people that it's kind of like a meet cute situation. Um, I really enjoyed it. The next book I listened to was The Well Rider, and I am not even going to try and pronounce that. I will put the author's name on the board here because I know I'm going to mess that up. Even if I listen to it a million times for pronunciation, my I'll mess that pronunciation up. Um, I gave it four stars. I enjoyed the story. I don't know that I would have picked it up on my own. Um, I know I wouldn't have. I picked it up because it was a prompt for Pop Sugar or Book Riot. Book Riot, I think. And I enjoyed it. It was a real quick listen. I think the audiobook is only about four or five hours, so I sped through it pretty quickly. And I don't know what to say about it. I, it wasn't one that was super memorable for me, but I did enjoy it when I was listening to it. The next book that I listened to was The Book Jumper by Metchild Glazier, I think. And I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, too, and I apologize for that. I gave this book four stars as well. I really, really, really loved it. Um, it was slow at times. Um, it kind of drug on in places. But basically what this is, is this is a two families on an island who can enter the books, enter stories, and if they can they can interact with the characters or what or not interact with the world, whatever, um, but they're not supposed to change anything or really interact with the story. Um, because then that changes everything in the books in the everyday world. Um, there's a little bit of a of a mystery going on here. Key pieces of stories are disappearing and um, there's a little bit of a romance. Um, so it's interesting. It was really good. What book lover would not want to be able to enter into their favorite stories? But um, yeah, I, I'm not going to say anything else about it because it'll ruin the mystery. I enjoyed it. Go check it out. It was very interesting. Next, I listened to Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. I gave this three stars. It was an okay story. Not my favorite. In it, we follow a family whose youngest daughter, I believe, was in love with a boy. The boy came and to propose, but the mom said, nope, because the youngest daughter is in charge of taking care of me into my young life. She doesn't get to marry. Doesn't get to have kids. So, um, he, she says, but you can marry my her sister. And so the boy says, okay, agrees to do that so he can be close to the younger daughter and his one true love. And it's their story from that point on and romances. Um, and then ultimately there's some adultery in here. And I just, I don't do adultery stories. I, I don't, I can see no reason that adultery is ever okay. And, um... I just, uh, there's a little bit of magic in this because um, there's some lore from that region. I believe it's set in um, a South American country, maybe Mexico, Central America. Anyway, there's some lore in with it that makes it a little bit magical. So... Yeah, only three stars for me, though. So the next book I listened to was Moneyball, The Art of Winning in an Unfair Game by Michael Lewis. I gave this five stars. If you have seen the movie Moneyball, this is the book based off of that the movie was based off of. The movie has Brad Pitt in it. I watched the movie when it came out. I loved the movie. Um, I really enjoy baseball, and of course I love Brad Pitt. And so I was real interested to read this book or listen to this. It is nonfiction. It is a true account following the um, Los Angeles 
A's. Is it Los Angeles A's? Yeah. Anyway, so basically it is, they were the poorest franchised baseball team in America, and they were competing with people or franchises like the Yankees who have gobs and gobs and gobs of money, but the A's were still winning games with the, with the lowest budget to be able to play, pay their players. And it kind of goes through their process of how they picked them, how they got the teams. They kind of picked the kids that were coming out that, or the players that were coming out of the baseball world, out of college, that nobody else wanted, but who certain aspects was what the team needed. It's almost like the rejects of the baseball world. And they were, they were able to build a winning team using this method. I found this really interesting from both a baseball aspect and also from the financial aspect of things. That's the accountant in me. I find that stuff kind of interesting. But um, all in all, I enjoyed it. And I really want to read more nonfiction going forward that involves sports like that, either baseball or football. Um, I'm, hopefully, I'll be able to find some. So if you know of any, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so the final book that I read in the month of November, it was really, I mean, it's a book on Goodreads. I marked it, whatever. Um, it was Belinda Blinked, book one by Rocky Flintstone. And this is the book that the podcast my Dad Wrote a Porno is based off of. Now, I did not give this book a rating, an official rating in Goodreads because I don't know how you can rate this. Um, I listened to the whole season of the podcast, uh, season one, and basically they go through and they read this book chapter by chapter. It is read word for word um, by Rocky Flintstone's son and two... I think maybe his sister and their friend. I think that's the relationship. I'm not really sure. But there's three people. There's two guys and a girl. Um, and they comment on the book as they're reading it. They read a chapter, sometimes a couple of chapters, if one of the chapters is really short. But it is the most hysterical thing I have probably ever listened to. So the book itself, I would probably give a one star rating to because the book is atrocious. I mean, it is just awful. But the podcast is five stars and it really makes this book enjoyable because of the podcast and the commentary and all of that. You, I, I laughed so hard. I was crying and could not breathe some of the time. So highly recommend the podcast just because it is so funny. I will be continuing on with the next season, um, so I'll be reading Belinda Blinked 2 at some time in the future. Um, but, yeah. I, like I said, I didn't give the book itself a rating because I didn't think that was fair, and I didn't know how to justify a rating on that because, again, the book is a one star, the, but the podcast makes it five stars. And, um, I mean, I guess I could give it a three star, Splitting the difference. I don't know. Tell me in the comments below what you would do in this situation So that is it. That's my ten books. I feel like I really didn't do justice to this wrap-up this month I'm a little brain dead. It's the end of the year things are crazy um, But all in all I had a pretty good reading month most of the books were four stars had a few five stars a three star here and there but um, all in all again, it was a really good reading month but a lot of the books weren't memorable. Um, they were kind of forgettable, I guess. I don't know. But um, anyway, let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books, what you thought about them, if you're going to pick them up. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up over there. That lets me know you want me to continue doing wrap-ups in 2020. And it also just lets me know you enjoyed this video and that you watched it. Um, if you didn't enjoy it, you're welcome to give me a thumbs down. Um, but while you're over there, be sure and hit that subscribe button and 
make sure you ring that bell so you can get notifications of when I post new videos. I've got lots of new content coming in 2020 that I'm really excited about, and I hope you will join me then. As always, be sure and leave me a comment. Simple emoji will work if you don't have anything related to the video. And until next month, when we have my December 2020, 2019 wrap-up, I will talk to you later. Bye.